Welcome back. Well, today we're going to be talking about the penultimate fifth Doctor episode, Planet of Fire. So, here we go. On the desert world of Sarn, rogue natives worship the fire god Logar and follow the chief elder, Timonov, who demands obedience. Dissenters are known as unbelievers, and two of them, Amy and Roscow, cause unrest when they claim to have ventured to the top of the sacred fire mountain, but not found Logar. One of the Sarns, Malkon, is known as the Chosen One because of the unusual double triangle symbol burned into his skin. He is also unusual for having been found as a baby on the slopes of the sacred fire mountain. The same triangle symbol is found on a metal artifact uncovered in an archaeological dig in Lazorde, overseen by Professor Howard Foster. His stepdaughter Perry Brown is bored with the dig and wants to go traveling in Morocco, and when he seeks to prevent this, she steals the strange artifact and tries to swim for freedom. Fortunately for her, the TARDIS land has landed nearby, responding to a distress call sent by the strange artifact, and Turlo sees her drowning and rescues her. Going through her possessions as she recovers, he finds the artifact and acknowledges the same triangle symbol is burnt into his own flesh. Uh oh. The fifth doctor returns to the TARDIS after attempting to triangulate the source of the signal being emitted by the artifact. The ship dematerializes, seemingly on its own. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It soon arrives on Sarn, and the Doctor and Turlo set off to explore. The android Chameleon has meanwhile made mental contact with its old controller, the Master, who attempts to assert his control and change Chameleon's appearance from that of Howard. Chameleon tries to warn Perry of the Master, but the Master succeeds in gaining control. She flees the TARDIS with the creature in pursuit as the rumblings of the volcanoes of Sarn gather ferocity. Well, that's not good. In the Sarn colony, Timonov has damned the unbelievers to be sacrificed to appease Logar and stop the tremors. They flee to a secret base in the mountains filled with seismo seismological apparatus, which the Doctor and Turlo stumble across. The Doctor informs the unbelievers that the tunnels, which have been their refuge, are volcanic vents which will soon fill molten lava. It is also established that Turlo is of the same race as those who colonize the planet, and when the indigenous people sees his Mysel's triangle, they greet him as the second chosen one. Okay. Turlo realizes that Malcon may be his brother, and becomes even more worried when Perry turns up and mentions the master. Mm hmm Another important figure in Sarn mythology is the Outsider, a promised prophet, and Chameleon, controlled by the master, fulfills his role admirably. He convinces Timonov of the appropriateness of harsh action, and when the doctor arrives with the unbelievers, they are all seized for burning. However, Malcon and Perry arrive shortly afterwards and stop this, but not before Malcon has been injured. Turlo is aghast when he finds his relative has been shot, and the doctor presses him for as much information as, as he has on the strange circumstances of Starn. It seems it is a long abandoned Trion colony planet, and that Turlo, a Trion, Suspects some of his family were sent here after a revolution against the hereditary leading clans of his homeworld. He, suppose, he supposes his father died in a crash, but that Malcon survived, while he himself was sent in exile to Earth, overseen by a Tron agent masquerading as a solicitor in Chancery Lane. Hmm. Chameleon has Mio seized Perry and, used, and uses her to transport a black box into the control room of the TARDIS. It contains Demetri's master, the real thing, has been transformed by a disastrous experiment with his trademark tissue compression eliminator weapon. The master thus reestablished a psychic link with Chameleon to gain the power of movement and has maneuvered the robot to Sarn so that he could take advantage of the restorative powers of the n of the new of the numismaton gas with the fi within the fire mountain. Tola realizes that Tola realizes the imminent volcanic burst will destroy the Sarn colony, so he uses a functioning communication unit to get in touch with Trion and plead for a rescue ship to evacuate the planet. In doing so, he abandons his own freedom. Oh boy. Acting on a message from the Doctor, Tola programs the TARDIS to rescue the Doctor and Perry from the gas control room, foregoing a chance to stay aboard and escape from the military arriving from his homeworld. He finds out that a general amnesty has been issued and he is free to return home. Yay! Only the elders choose to remain on the planet to die, facing the erupting volcanoes. Timonov retaining his faith, in, even in the face of a 
Amy Ann's revelation that Logar was merely a man in a fireproof suit. Another deception. The Doctor, meanwhile, succeeds in weakening the Master's hold over Chameleon, interrupts the numinous the new Miss Maton experiment. He has chlorophyll gas to the surge, but is unable to prevent the master from requiring his usual size and becoming, he taunts, a thousand times stronger. As the gas hole alters, the master is trapped and the doctor does not intervene despite his old enemy's threats and then pleading, watching his seemly immolated. Employed by the terminally wounded chameleon, the doctor has put the automaton out of his misery using the TCE. Escaping the destruction of the gas control room in the TARDIS along with Perry, the Doctor lands to pick up Turlow, only to find that he is elected to return to Tryon now that he is a free man. Turlow tells Perry to look after the Doctor. He then parts from the Doctor, thanking him for, thanking him for all that he has learned in his travels with him. As the Doctor and Perry return to the TARDIS, she says she has a few months vacation left and would like to spend it traveling with him. The Doctor accepts, and they depart. Well, that was an interesting story. The departure of one companion and the introduction of another. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Anyway, let's get some production notes here. It was decided that because of the climate of Lan Lanzarote, where the serial was filmed, the cast would have to alter their usual costumes. Although Peter Davison started the story wearing his cricketeer outfit, for the rest of the story, he wore a different pair of trousers with crystal mark braces and a beige floral waistcoat. Strickson shed his usual school uniform in favor of a blue pinstripe shirt and tan shorts with a pair of swim briefs underneath. Nicola Bryant also wore a pink bikini beneath her clothes to which she stripped down for a couple of scenes. Mark Strickson has also reprised the role of Turlow in the audio plays by Big Finish Productions and penned the introduction up to the spin-off novel Turlow and the Earthlink Dilemma. Promotional photographs taken during production include a shot of Peter Davison wearing a tuxedo and holding a gun, with Nicola Bryant standing next to him in a bikini in the style of James Bond. Eleanor Braun was originally considered for the role of Sarasta. This serial was originally intended as a swan song for Anthony Ainley as the master since his contract with the show had come to an end, hence the death of his character in the new Miss Maid in the new Miss Maiden Flames at the story's climax. As a deliberate tease for the audience, the master's truncated final line is why won't you even show mercy to your own, with him apparently being killed by the gas just as he about to reveal the true nature of his relationship to the Doctor? However, when the Master reappeared in the following seasons, The Mark of the Ronnie, without explanation, however, the Master reappeared in the following seasons, The Mark of the Ronnie, without explanation as to how he survived the flames. Script editor Eric Sayward cut from The Mark of the Ronnie the explanation for the Master's survival provided by writers Pip and Jane Baker. But the explanation is in their novelization of the serial. Yeah, that's uh, kind of sucks that we never got to find out what, his, what the full line was, but and eh, what you gonna do? So when I say this is a pretty interesting story, and yeah, it definitely will not be the last time we will see the Master, and of course the introduction of Perry, I thought was kind of nice. So overall, I give Planet of Fire four Sonic screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next week as we look at the Fifth Doctor's final adventure, The Caves of Androzani. So, until then, this is Sue Bean Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I'm a recipient of the neutron flow. Who's your lucky chili, baby? Fantastic! Alon Z! Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fences are cool, and Stetsons are cool.